There are a lot of fighters who are known for their time in Muay Thai, but many fighters also venture into the world of MMA. This is Nathan with Muay Thai Authority, and in this video, we are going to be looking at fighters you likely didn't know fought in MMA. It's no secret that MMA brings in bigger paychecks than Muay Thai. A lot of talent is lost to the MMA world because of this, but not everyone ends up making a full transition. Some guys simply dabble and then come back. Here are some fighters you likely had no idea fought in MMA. For this list, we are focusing on fighters primarily known for their time in the Muay Thai ring. Guys who are primarily known for K1 or kickboxing are not included. Before we get on with the list, let's make sure to smash that like button on the video and leave a comment on anyone you think should have been included. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you already aren't. This list is in no particular order. And to kick it off, we're going to start with the pioneer of American Muay Thai. The sole assassin Kevin Ross. That's right, the man known for putting America on the Muay Thai map has fought in MMA. Ross had an MMA fight before his Muay Thai career really took off. Muay Thai fighters can do really well in MMA. The problem is a lot of Muay Thai fighters try to solely rely on their Muay Thai and that's not going to work out. Back in 2006, he fought Angelo and Tuna at Tough Enough 1 in Las Vegas. Ross's foray into MMA wouldn't go well as he was submitted by Triangle Choke in the first round. Honestly, it's probably for the best that he didn't win this fight because if he had, who knows if he would have had the chance to witness his grit and greatness in the Muay Thai ring. Who knows if he would have had the chance to see his fights against the likes of Sanjay, Malape, Sagatao, and Tetsuya Yamamoto. Kevin Ross's MMA loss was the Muay Thai world's good fortune. Next on this list is Jabbar Askarov, who is most notably known for appearing on the first season of The Contender Asia. It was a Muay Thai version of The Contender Boxing Show. It featured some big names from the Muay Thai world, including Yeltsin Klai, Narapol, and John Wayne Parr. Askarov might be known for some great K1 fights, but what put him on the map was his appearance on The Contender Asia, where he made it to the semifinals, where he dropped a decision to John Wayne Parr. Jabbar has four MMA fights and started competing in MMA around the time he started fighting for K1. He holds a record of 4-0 in MMA, and after his first MMA fight in 2006, it would be another 9 years before he returned to the world of MMA. In 2015, he racked up 3 MMA fights in 6 months, winning all of them, and then he returned to Muay Thai and kickboxing permanently. He hasn't fought in MMA since then, but when he did, he performed well. All 4 of his wins in MMA were by stoppage, with 3 of those being by TKO and 1 by submission. Up next is Francis Fabio Pinka who has long been one of the country's top Muay Thai talents. Fighting all over the world, he has long been considered one of the best non-Thais to compete in Muay Thai in the last 10 years. The reason many might not be aware of him stepping into the MMA ring is because it happened recently in August of 2020 without much hype around it. He made his MMA debut at one championship, No Surrender 3 in Bangkok, Thailand against Shannon, where we're at Chai, losing by split decision. Seems like MMA might be what Pink is focusing on now, as it's been three years since he last competed in Muay Thai or even kickboxing. Up next, former Lumpini and Roger Dernern Stadium champion Sagadao Pet Payatai is another Muay Thai fighter you might not have realized made the move to MMA. It was a rather quiet transition as he had not fought Muay Thai in nearly three years when he made his MMA debut in 2017 for one championship. Sagadao started off his MMA career with three straight knockout victories before dropping a decision in early 2018. He was originally announced as the winner in his fight against Magia, but the result was later overturned. After that, he went on hiatus and recently returned to action for the first time in three years for one championship. But it was back in Muay Thai. For being one of the best Muay Thai fighters in the world for quite some time, a transition to MMA where he went 3-1 isn't bad. Now, probably the biggest name in Muay Thai to ever transition or at least take a fight in MMA was none other than Ramon Deckers, who was the poster boy for non ties going to compete in Thailand. The Dutch striker made his name in the 90s when he was taking on the best of the best in Thailand. Nowadays, foreigners in Thailand is nothing special. It happens all the time, but back in the 90s, it was unheard of. Back in 2005, after having cemented his legacy in the Muay Thai world, Deckers decided to try his hand at MMA. Unlike most people that take a gradual step into the sport when they're transitioning from striking only martial art, Deckers decided to dive right into the deep end. His one and only fight was against UFC and Pancras veteran Genki Sudo, who is also a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. As you can guess, by that description, things didn't go well for Deckers. He was submitted in the first round with a heel hook. Deckers would have two more kickboxing bouts for K1 after his lone MMA attempt before hanging up the gloves. Last on this list is Malapet Sasiprapa. 
who reached the peak of his popularity when he moved to the United States and continued to compete there. He had had fights with the likes of Yeltsin Klai, Kevin Ross, Fabio Pinka, Dwayne Ludwig, and many others. Despite being able to keep busy fighting Muay Thai in the United States and internationally, he made the transition to MMA in 2006. After winning his debut by KO, he would go on to post a 2-4 record in his next six fights before hanging up the four-ounce gloves and returning to purely striking. To his credit, he had MMA fights against seasoned fighters such as Thomas Denny and David Douglas, and definitely wasn't cherry-picking any of his matches. It seemed that the move was simply made for better paydays and because of the rising popularity in MMA at the time. There you have it. These are Muay Thai fighters who probably didn't know fought in MMA. Whether it was because it was a one-off or because they eventually came back to Muay Thai, these guys' trips into the MMA world tend to go under the radar. Hope you enjoyed the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel and stay up to date with our latest videos and make sure to smash that like button. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.